The following training video developed by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency seeks to help poll workers and other frontline election workers, whether paid or volunteer, observe and evaluate suspicious behaviors holistically, mitigate potential risk, and obtain help where necessary. Over the next several minutes, we will discuss approaches non-security trained professionals can take to act intentionally and thoughtfully when assessing suspicious behaviors, empowering you with non-confrontational techniques that may help you de-escalate such situations when appropriate. This training draws on physical security risk management guidance previously issued by CISA and is part of the agency's broader efforts to support election officials and their private sector partners to secure and build resilience in the nation's election infrastructure. Before we get started, please review the disclaimers on this slide. These non-confrontational techniques can be utilized by non-security professionals dealing with situations where they believe they have observed activities and behaviors that could be considered suspicious or indicative of criminal activity. Activities and behaviors should be reported only when there are articulable facts to support a rational conclusion that behavior is suspicious. Reports should not be based upon the exercise of rights protected under the Constitution, nor should reports be based solely upon an individual's race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or a combination of such factors. The approaches, techniques, and tactics described are options for consideration and do not dictate policy or individual action. DHS accepts no liability for injuries associated with use of the information or skills discussed in this video. First, it's important to recognize that today's elections are being administered in a heightened threat environment. Election workers are facing threats and harassment, and our federal partners assess that such behavior is likely to increase as the midterm elections approach. While nearly all of this activity is happening online, we recognize that some of you may potentially face harmful situations at polls or other election facilities this year. CISA's de-escalation series for critical infrastructure owners and operators introduces four products to help recognize the warning signs of someone on a path to violence, assess if the situation or person of concern is escalating, or if emergency response is needed immediately, de-escalate the situation currently taking place through purposeful actions, verbal communication, and body language, and report the situation through appropriate channels to enable management of an evolving threat and 911 for immediate threats. Today's discussion will contain some examples of potential stressors, observable behavior or physical indicators, and potential warning signs of an escalating person. These are not intended to be taken as single indicators, but should be observed to support a holistic assessment of the situation or person of concern. How can you recognize the warning signs of an escalating person or situation? This can be challenging to do on top of your regular election duties, especially during high volume voting periods but taking a moment to consider an individual's behavior and communication in totality can help detect and recognize the potential for violence. When you notice the warning signs, you can help prevent violence. This is especially important as individuals have expressed frustrations and skepticism toward elections and those who run them. These frustrations could boil over at voting sites and other election facilities. Often people who may resort to violence can be driven by a combination of predispositions, grievances, personal or professional stressors, and assorted resentments. Examples of stressors or life changes may include financial hardship, illness or death among family and friends, fear of becoming sick from public contact, employment actions such as termination or demotion. However, it's important to note that life stressors alone are not indicative of warning signs of an escalating person. Also, a person's behavior and communications are often disclosed through physical means. Pay attention to clues presented from facial expressions, emotions, and body language. Some observable clues may include clenched jaw and or bald fists without reasonable explanation, pacing or restlessness without reasonable explanation, unwillingness to comply with election rules or election worker instructions without reasonable explanation, and making threats and or threatening gestures using a weapon. Some of these activities, while concerning, may be constitutionally protected and should be reported only when there are sufficient facts to support a rational conclusion that the behavior represents a potential threat of violence. Generally, when you notice potential indicators of suspicious or criminal activity, you'll want to consider whether there is an immediate threat versus warning signs of an escalating situation. While we'll cover reporting in more depth later on, you can consider the following steps. If there's an immediate and known threat, loudly let others in the immediate area know, along with a suggested response, such as, Gun! Run! Bomb! Get out! Your job is to seek safety and help others know 
so that they too can seek safety. If there is no immediate threat, report to your election facility supervisor, county official, or security guard to inform others of what you have observed. Next, the assessment process helps determine whether an emergency response is needed, if de-escalation is possible, or if a more formal assessment is appropriate. The assessment process will consider three crucial factors. The person of concern, the environment that the behavior is being exhibited in, and the assessor themselves. Personal safety is paramount. Election workers must begin by assessing their own ability to safely de-escalate, or if they need to seek help for situations beyond their control. On the other hand, it's important to be mindful of barriers that could exist in voting sites or election facilities that limit or diminish assessment or potential de-escalation. These can include lack of empathy to understand or feel what a voter or coworker is experiencing, being preoccupied or in a hurry when working with voters or colleagues, language or cultural differences between poll workers and voters with limited English proficiency, reacting with defensiveness or anger towards voters that may ask questions about the voting process, labeling or lecturing an individual who may be a first-time voter or voter who does not understand recent rule changes. Ensuring the voting site or election facility is free of potential barriers is just as important as being aware of potential signs of escalation. So, what does an escalating person look like? It's important to consider your working environment, how elections are administered in your jurisdiction, and how voters and members of the public have been engaging in the process. For example, has your jurisdiction recently received threatening communications or contact? We can separate potential observable signs into two categories, early warning signs and signs of imminent danger. Some early warning signs include, without reasonable explanation, pacing, ruminating, and agitated gestures in an election office, blocking others' movement in or outside the election facility, finger pointing at election workers or voters, distracted or inability to focus at the voting site. Signs of imminent danger include without reasonable explanation, flushed, tightened jaw, clenched fist, and shaking, rapid breathing, raised voice, and nervous laughter, avoiding security systems or personnel at the election site, abandoning an object or package at the polling location. Remember that we are assessing if a person may cause potential violence and, if so, to determine if an emergency response is needed if de-escalation is possible, or if a more formal assessment is appropriate. Once the decision is made to safely engage the individual, there are valuable techniques to consider when attempting to calm the situation. Purposeful actions, verbal communication, and body language techniques can be used to calm an escalating person and potentially prevent violent or harmful acts. As always, individuals should understand their own capabilities and limitations when dealing with a potentially violent individual, and recognize when it's time to seek help or to report to your supervisor. If there is a risk of imminent violence, remove yourself from the situation, seek safety, and call 911 immediately. Then, follow your jurisdiction's emergency action or security plan. In an election environment, some purposeful actions may include remaining calm, changing the setting. When possible, remove the source of conflict from the voting location or election facility until the situation is de-escalated. Listen with empathy and attempt to understand the voter. Respect personal space. In these situations, how you communicate can be just as important as what you communicate. Your tone, volume, rate of speech, and inflection all play a part in de-escalating through verbal communications. In other words, what can you offer the individual to help them? Here are some examples to illustrate the techniques. Instead of calm down, say, I can see that you are upset. Instead of, I can't help you, say, I want to help, what can I do? Instead of, I know how you feel, say, I understand that you feel. Finally, your body language is also an important part of de-escalation. For example, instead of pointing your finger, try keeping your hands down, open, and visible at all times. Instead of, excessive gesturing or pacing, try using slow, deliberate movements. Instead of faking a smile or standing rigidly, try maintaining a neutral and relaxed facial expression and posture. When it feels like the situation is escalating beyond control, 
It will be necessary to initiate any emergency action plans and report the incident. The most important rule is to alert first responders if violence is imminent or if there's a credible threat after moving to a safe location. In addition to reporting to law enforcement and first responders, election workers are encouraged to work with their organization to create a system of reporting and culture of shared responsibility. Together, everyone can contribute to a safe and secure voting experience. If you aren't aware of any formal reporting guidelines within your jurisdiction, reach out to your election director to gather more information ahead of the election. When you call 911, there are pieces of information that would be helpful to the 911 call taker that will help them provide the appropriate assistance. These include your name and location, the location of the incident and person of concern, a description of the situation, is the incident still in progress, a physical description of the person of concern, the type and number of weapons, if any, the number of potential victims. In situations where there's no immediate threat to safety, Election workers should follow their organization's reporting procedures. The following pieces of information could help your organization make a more detailed assessment. The exact nature and context of the concerning behavior, comment, and or perceived threat. Who or what is or was the target. Any available background regarding the person of concern. Identify any unusual behaviors or descriptors of the individual of concern. Identify specific concerning suspicious or threatening observed behaviors. Identify any actions that were argumentative or confrontational. Indications that the person was attempting to avoid security. Contrary to life-threatening situations, it can sometimes be intimidating to report within your organizational structure. Sometimes workers may fear that they get it wrong or may unintentionally cause harm to someone. However, every piece of information can help contribute to a larger and more informed threat assessment by an organization's threat management team. Workers should collaborate with their organization to create a positive reporting environment. Thank you for participating in today's training. We hope you have gained familiarity with techniques that can help you and your colleagues identify suspicious behaviors to prevent or mitigate potential physical violence or other harmful acts that may occur before, during, or after an election. Let's recap a few important points. This series is not intended to put anyone in harmful situations. Personal safety is always the number one priority. However, there may be opportunities for you to identify signs of suspicious activity, including possible violence, and determine if the situation can be safely de-escalated or whether immediate help is required. Our discussion today also provided some examples of potential stressors, observable behavioral indicators, observable physical behaviors, and potential warning signs of an escalating person to be considered when working with voters or members of the public. These examples are not intended to be taken as single indicators, but should be considered in a holistic assessment of the situation. As mentioned earlier, these non-confrontational techniques can be utilized by non-security professionals dealing with situations where they believe they have observed activities and behaviors that could be considered suspicious and or indicative of criminal activity. Activities and behaviors should be reported only when there are articulable facts to support a rational conclusion that the behavior is suspicious. Reports should not be based on the exercise of rights protected under the Constitution, nor should reports be based solely upon an individual's race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or combination of such factors. The approaches, techniques, and tactics described are options for consideration and do not dictate policy or individual action. DHS accepts no liability for any injuries associated with the use of the information or skills discussed in this video. To view more detailed information about today's training and CISA's broader physical security risk management guidance, please visit CISA.gov. Our de-escalation series page includes detailed guidance on each of the four areas we discussed today. If you have any questions, please reach out to electionsecurity at CISA.dhs.gov. With non-confrontational techniques and prevention in mind, election workers can help to keep our elections safe and secure. Thank you for everything that you are doing to safeguard the nation's elections.